Good morning, everybody. Ted Haggard here from St. James Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. It's a beautiful Sunday morning and a wonderful time for us to begin a new week. Every Sunday, we worship the Lord on Sunday mornings and have for 2,000 years because it's the beginning of a new week. The sun's coming up. It's a new day. It's a new opportunity to start again. And so every Sunday morning, believers gather together all over the world to celebrate new beginnings, new opportunities, new uh, opportunities to grow in the Lord and to uh, let our lives be worked on by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and fellowship in the body of Christ. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to grow in the Lord. Well, of course, because of COVID, many of us are having to use Zoom and protect ourselves from being too close to others if we think we've got a health risk that may be damaging. And so that's why we're doing this. We have a service at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning, but many listen to this and uh, get their Bible lesson that way. All of you know, we study the Bible through this little booklet, the Bible Highlights booklet, and this will walk you through the entire Bible in a year. And if you want a copy of this, you just uh, text me your address and say you want a copy. Uh, it's totally free. We cover the expenses for it. And uh, if you'll text me at 719-338-0079, then the office staff will get that and they'll get your booklet right out to you. Okay, so this morning we are in Exodus, the fifth chapter. And in Exodus, the fifth chapter, it's when Aaron and Moses, they've been commissioned by the Lord. The Lord is calling them. The Lord is working on them. And they're going to confront Pharaoh or to ask Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go into the wilderness to worship. And so there are several things we can do here to make this chapter more practical. Okay, think of the devil uh, or as Pharaoh as the devil, okay? So, or the world, uh, the, there's the world, the flesh, the devil. Pharaoh represents all those things because Pharaoh is keeping the people of God enslaved and busy about things that they need not do. And so the devil uses people and the world uses people, and the flesh, our old sin nature, will use us to distract us from the things of God. That's what Pharaoh's role is here if we make a practical application for us from this story. Moses, if you'll think of Moses' voice to Pharaoh, Moses' voice is the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so when he says to Pharaoh, let my people go, it's like the Holy Spirit saying into our hearts that we need to we need to undo the work of the devil and undo the work of the world and undo the work of our old sin nature in our lives. So Moses's voice is the voice of the Holy Spirit for our application. And then the Israelites are a picture of us, the chosen people of God. And here we are chosen by God. We're God's chosen people, but we're still in the land of Egypt, and Pharaoh is still too, too dominant. That would be the world or the flesh or the devil, still too dominant in many areas of our life. So this is a picture of what goes on with every one of us as we're growing in the Lord and as we're uh, trying to find freedom and growing in freedom in the Lord. And I want to emphasize this to you so you don't be discouraged. Some people will receive a strong message on, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And when they get that message so strongly, and then they pray their prayers, but they're not free yet. Or they go to church, but they're not free yet. Or, or they go to the prayer meetings and receive prayer and give prayer, but they're still not free. Well, that's exactly the way it was in this portion of Scripture. The devil, the world or our old sin nature, are still holding on to us. The Holy Spirit's saying, let them go. And, and there we are in a position where actually it gets harder. Okay? And so let's look at this. Uh, here, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, after the presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. Okay, so... Here's Moses and his spokesperson. That's a Holy Spirit picture for us. Uh, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go so they may hold a festival in my honor in the wilderness. So here's the Holy Spirit saying 
these people need to be free. Let them go. But notice the devil or our old sin nature or the the world doesn't easily say, oh, sure, I'll let him go. Oh, you're here as a spokesperson for the God of Israel. Oh, well, I'll let the people go. Oh, no, that's when the battle starts. Is that so, retorted Pharaoh? And who is the Lord? That's exactly what the devil will say about you. You'll get spirit-filled, and then the devil and his his sins or the distractions will say, okay, so who is the Lord? Are they as appealing as alcohol? Are they as appealing as immorality? Are they as appealing for greed and power? Are they as appealing as these things? Here, Pharaoh is essentially mocking the voice of the Holy Spirit inside of us. It's the devil saying, I'm not going to let them go. And who is the Lord? Why should I listen to them and let them go? I don't know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. But Aaron and Moses persisted, just like the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit will never give up on us. The God of the Hebrews has met with us, they declared. So let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness so we can offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. If we don't, he will kill us with a plague or with a sword. Now, here it is, a strong argument. We've got to do it. And every one of us go through these stages as we grow in the Lord. We've got to do it. We've got to get liberation in this area or or he's going to kill us. And here it says, here it says, Pharaoh replied, Moses and Aaron, why are you distracting the people from their tasks? In other words, this is who they are. This is what they should do. Get back to work. Look, there are many of your people in the land and you are stopping them from their work. And so here the devil is saying, look, you've always had these things in your life. These are the things you need to be doing. These are just part of you. You are who you are, and you don't need to go into the wilderness. You need to keep doing your tasks. That same day, Pharaoh sent an order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the Israelite foreman, do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves, but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they are crying out. Let us go and offer sacrifices to God. Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. uh, That will teach them to listen. uh, That will teach them to listen to lies. That's exactly what the devil will do with you. Here's what I noticed way back in college days. We would talk amongst the guys in our dorm. We went, I went, Gail and I went to a, a Christian university and it was wonderful. And we had dorm meetings and we talked about how temptations got worse when we would pray and fast. And we talked about if we really made a commitment to go to church and tithe and do those things, all of a sudden the temptations that were in us would multiply. Life would get harder. Studying would get more difficult. Discipline would get more discipline, uh, more difficult. And it was actually, we concluded it was actually easier not to seek the Lord and we could live a holier life. It was the most interesting thing as we talked about it because praying and fasting should appropriate the power of the Holy Spirit. But when the Holy Spirit says to Pharaoh, let these people go, Pharaoh responds with, I'm going to make you work harder. I'm going to punish you for this. I'm going to put you through a process you're not going to appreciate. And here's what happens. What happens is that will teach them to listen to lies. The devil will breathe into us. Oh, the power of the Holy Spirit's not real. Oh, the scripture, they are, the scripture's not liberating like you think. Because when you read the Bible all the time, and when you grow in the scripture, the devil will punish you for that. He's going to make it harder. You're going to have to make the same amount of bricks, but you're going to have to do it with straw. Uh-huh. So the slave drivers and foremen, this is verse 10, went out and told the people, this is what Pharaoh says, I will not provide any more straw for you. Now, let me tell you all something. This is why churches want to be pleasant, want to be happy, want everything to be okay, but they're not actually spiritually engaging. They'll let you sing nice, Christian, happy songs, but they won't let you get into spiritual warfare. They won't let you get into prayer meetings that are dynamic and powerful and spiritually engaging for your region. They won't encourage you to go on prayer walks, but they will encourage you to come to social events. 
Why? It's because we're okay with pleasant, social, nice Christian events. But as soon as we start to engage where the Holy Spirit is working in us powerfully to liberate us and to get us on the track of God's freedom for our life and God's full blessings in our life, there's going to be a little bit of a struggle. And the devil's going to start mocking God and say what God says is a lie. How many people have have said, I want the Holy Spirit to set me free from an addiction? They don't get it right away. And then the devil says, oh, this stuff's a lie. All right. And so the slave drivers uh, and the foreman went out and told the people, this is what Pharaoh says. I will not provide any more straw for you. Go and get it yourselves. Find it wherever you can. But you must produce just as many bricks as before. So the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt in search for stubble to use a straw. Meanwhile, the Egyptian slave drivers continued to push hard. Egyptian slave drivers. That's exactly what darkness is. That's exactly what our old sin nature is. That's exactly what the devil's like. It's exactly what the world's like. All right. Meet your daily quota of bricks, just as you did when we provided you the straw they demanded. Then they whipped the Israelite foreman they they had put in charge of the crews. Why haven't you met your quota um, either yesterday or today? They demanded. Now, these are the Israelite foreman. That's pictures for us, for our pastors and spiritual leaders. All right. Very, very often I've noticed through the years, we can have a solid Christian man or woman in our congregation until I put them on the platform and I put them on the platform and let them start teaching. They enter into a whole different level of spiritual conflict. And before you know it, they're doing things they would have never dreamed of before. And so it's this Christian growth thing is interesting because people assume earth is heaven. It's not. In heaven, God's perfect will is performed uh, immaculately with perfection. All right. But here on the earth, there are several influences, bad ideas, the devil, human volition, natural law, those influences that aren't dominant in uh, heaven. Actually, there's no devil. There's none of that. No bad ideas in heaven. All right. And so because of it, here on the earth, spiritual warfare is a reality for our lives and for our children. And see, here, here, they punish the people, they make them work harder. But the Israelite foremen, they go after those guys, uh, especially, and, and punish them. And so the Israelite foreman went to Pharaoh and pleaded, please don't treat your servants like this. They begged, we are given no straw, but the slave drivers still demand, make bricks. We are being beaten, but it isn't our fault. Your own people are to blame. But Pharaoh shouted, you are lazy. And that's why the devil tells Christians and Christian leaders, you're not effective. You're going to fail. You're no good. All those things directed toward the leadership. And that's why God encourages all of us to pray for those who are in authority. You are lazy, lazy. That's why you're saying, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Now get back to work. No straw will be given to you, but you must still produce the full quota of bricks. All right. Then it goes down to, we don't have time to go over this. You can look at it yourself. In verse 20, as they left Pharaoh's court, they confronted Moses and Aaron. That's when we say to the Holy Spirit, you're not powerful enough. Who, are, who were waiting outside for him. The foreman said to them, may the Lord judge and punish you for making us stink before Pharaoh. In other words, God makes us so we're targets of the enemy. You have put a sword into their hands, an excuse to kill us. And then Moses wonders why this is happening. All right, everybody. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit understands this, and he doesn't wonder why it's happening. But here's the point for all of us. Let's do it. The Word of God works. The power of the Holy Spirit works. The body of Christ works. But there there are others who've infiltrated into all of that to make it confusing. And sometimes when we do our best, the enemy wants to make sure that's our worst day. All right. So let's be faithful. 
Let's do right. Let's pursue the scriptures. Let's be pillars in the body of Christ. Let's not let the enemy get to us and discourage us. All right. So everybody, that's our 15 minutes for this week. And love you. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And remember, this is a type. This is a shadow. It's not a perfect illustration. But it does give us the idea that as soon as God's voice starts speaking, and as soon as people start to respond and want to want to grow in the Lord, it might not be an easy path. It might, re- might require patient endurance. It might require uh, us just being steady, consistent, faithful people. All right. You have a wonderful week. The Lord Jesus bless you.